Hello, my name is Ilona and I'm the curate here in the Chase Benefice. Welcome to our service. Today is the day of Pentecost, otherwise known as Whit Sunday. It marks the end of the great 50 days of Eastertide, which start from Easter Sunday when we celebrate the raising of Christ and move through seven weeks of exploring what the resurrection might mean for us as well as for the early church. You may remember that on the second week of Easter, I spoke about Jesus' promise that we would receive another advocate, companion and guide who would always be with us and in us. Today, we celebrate the granting of that promise, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And our Gospel reading today tells us that we can think of that gift as living water that quenches our thirst forever. You might like to pause the video now and join me in lighting a candle as our service begins. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! We continue with the prayer of preparation, and if you know the words, please do join in. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of the Collect for Pentecost. God who has at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Michael is now going to read today's Gospel reading. A reading from the Gospel of John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Today's Gospel reading comes from John, and although it's very short, it bears one of the hallmarks of his writing his emphasis on the identity of the man we know as Jesus. It shapes the content and flow of the whole gospel from beginning to end. And here we find the identity of Jesus is framed in the idea of water, not just ordinary water, but living water. Water is a powerful idea. It offers us pleasure, danger and relief. We can enjoy the sight or sound of a waterfall feel the despair of lives taken or ruined by flooding or waterborne disease, and we can welcome the rain that comes after drought. We talk about gasping for a cup of tea. We may be thirsty for knowledge. Fountains and wishing wells are full of coins thrown for good luck. And in the film Ice Cold and Alex, it was a chilled glass of lager and was the prize at the end of a long trek through the desert. Now, it's often said that Jesus used words and ideas that his listeners would easily understand. It's one of the reasons why, in the 21st century, we sometimes struggle to grasp the full significance of his teaching. We live in a very different world, and for that matter, in a different part of the world. We're no longer used to having sheep guarded day and night by shepherds. We don't think of mustard seeds growing into large trees and few of us have seen the effects of leprosy. But our modern world and lives also have much in common with those who knew Jesus 
or in the early church. We know what it is to have poverty, social exclusion, illness and danger. And it's one of the reasons why, in the 21st century, we can grasp the full significance of his teaching. But it does help us if we think about the world in which Jesus lived and spoke. So let's take a moment to consider the significance of water for his immediate audience. Water is a constant theme in the Old Testament, the scriptures that Jesus and his audience would have known very well. For example, we read in Exodus that God provided water out of a rock when Moses struck it with his staff. And in Isaiah, we hear that he promises Israel that he will pour water on a thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. And in one of the Psalms, David in the wilderness tells us that he seeks God. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So water was not just a necessity for life, it was, in Jesus' time, also deeply symbolic. And this passage is set in a scene where water is at the heart of the people. Jesus has come to one of the major festivals, the Festal, Festival of Tabernacles. It's a festival that reenacts the days of living in the wilderness when the Israelites lived in tents. And the last day of the festival was the climax, the ritual drawing of water from the river of Siloam in a gold jug to be poured into a silver bowl on the temple altar. It seems to have been connected to prayers for rain. It is a time, a moment, when the idea of water is of enormous significance and longing. And it is a time, a moment, when Jesus stands and says that he is water. And it's not just water, but a different kind of water, living water. All who are thirsty may come and drink from him, and from those who believe in him will come rivers of living water. It's a powerful image, and we've heard it before in John's Gospel, when Jesus encountered the Samaritan woman at the well. She was someone of little social significance in a community that was completely at odds with Jesus' own people, and yet he offered her living water. Although ordinary water only temporarily slakes thirst, living water means never being thirsty again, and is the gift of eternal life. Now John, the ever-present narrator of the Gospel, cannot keep quiet any longer. He tells us now that Jesus meant the Spirit, the promised gift of God, the giving of which is what we celebrate today at Pentecost. And that Spirit, that same living water, is given to us today, that we might be transformed as we live in relationship with God and with one another.
Deborah is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Following the theme of Jesus' offer of water, we pray for those who thirst. For the sick, the aged, the crushed, the weary. For those thirsting for freedom of body or spirit, we pray for patient faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For frontline workers in this COVID-19 pandemic, for all in the NHS, care workers, funeral directors, shop workers, delivery drivers and teachers, we pray for refreshment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the lonely, the lost, the persevering, the disappointed, the shamed, for those thirsting for love, we pray for companionship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the poor, the helpers, the spiritually parched, for those thirsting for water, we pray for rain. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves and your church throughout the world, quench the thirst of your people and turn our hearts to you, that living waters may flow from us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we bring you these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, whose cross split the rocky ground and brought forth water to a thirsty world. Amen. And now we say the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we share the peace of Christ. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be 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 with you. Thank you for joining us for the service today. Mark and I will continue to offer a service each Sunday online, and you can also listen to it by telephone. Details are in the weekly bulletin and on our website. And at 10 a.m. each Sunday, we will continue to hold a Eucharist from our studies, at which everyone from the Benefice family is remembered by name in prayer. And don't forget that you can keep in touch through the Benefice WhatsApp group, and the virtual coffee mornings on Tuesdays at 10.30 and Sundays at 11 a.m. Again, details are in the bulletin. And so we end with a blessing. May the Spirit, who hovered over the waters when the world was created, breathe into us the life he gives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.